How are you doing? Welcome back to workshop two of the Personal Development Club here at Dublin Academy of Education with myself, David Lewis, and Christopher Lauder. Yeah. Today, what we're going to talk about is how to develop the morning routine of a Navy SEAL. Now, the how to develop the morning routine of a Navy SEAL title is a little bit of a, a marketing thing here. We're not going to be having you doing burpees or anything like that, but we are going to talk about how your morning and how what you do in the morning actually sets you up for your entire day, which will then set you up for your entire week, your entire month, your entire year, and actually ultimately your entire life. So it's massively important. If you So again, all our notes, they're, they're available for download underneath. So make sure you download and uh, go through the notes and be taking notes on yourself and be doing the exercises along with us. Um, so let's open it up. Let's go to page two. All right, so last week was all about starting with the why, and we will recap that now in a second. So with that in mind, like why are we doing this? What is our outcome for this session? We have these on page two. It says, we want you as a student or as somebody taking this workshop to understand, first of all, what is a morning routine? Like what is it? Okay, before you go to improve it, you have to understand exactly what it is. Part two, we, have to, we want you to understand, believe, and really, like, really kind of get the power of why is an effective morning routine, an effective personalized morning routine important for you. And I think that personalized word is quite important because my one's going to be different to Chris's, it's going to be different to yours, it's going to be different to anybody else. We all have different ideas of what we want to do and what works for us. So having one that's effective for you, so one that you are going to do, and having personalized towards your outcome, towards your goal, towards your lifestyle or whatever it is, that is incredibly important. So once we've, we've, under, we've shown you what it is, once you understand what it is, once you believe in it, we're then going to go on to the three pillars of a powerful morning routine so what this is this is actually the effective part this is what these are three pillars that you can put in place to actually build this personalized morning routine for you okay so that's what we want you having at the end if you look at page three we have a bit of a recap of module one now our whole synthesis of module one was it was goal setting but we actually started talking about outcomes but we said goals every single goal must be based on a why everything we're going to say here must be based on a why. Whenever you do anything, you should ask yourself, why? And we synthesized all the stuff and distilled it down into this one model here. And just as a brief recap, this model, a lot of people work from the outside in, but we want you and we feel that anyone that's gonna be successful in anything, whether consciously or subconsciously, will work from the inside out. They will start with a why. They will see themselves doing it. They'll believe that they can do it. They will then set a goal. They will break through the barrier of fear, start to take action. And when they take action on it, they will get feedback, good or positive or negative, but then they'll take more action. As we said, you bounce around in there until you achieve your ultimate goal or your ultimate outcome. But it's all, it's all has a core of with why. If you haven't listened to that, we really implore you to go back and listen to workshop one, work through it before coming on to today. Okay, let's get into, th let's get into it today. So our introduction, our very first thing and our first outcome is, what is a morning routine? It says on top a really important quote, a really important quote, we make our routines and then they make us. Okay, so what that means is you're, whatever you do consistently over time is who or what you become. So what we did in the workshop is I would ask the class, what is a morning routine? And very often you get kind of a wishy-washy answer. So think to yourself, what do you think is a morning routine? Okay, and if, if you Google it, there's, uh, there's many different answers, but for us, a morning routine is an action that you perform before your main activity of the day. Okay, and it could consist of hundreds of things, it could consist of three things, but it's the action you perform before your main activity. So before you go to school, before you go to work, before whatever you're doing. Okay, I would then ask every single student to write down, as you can see there, what do you do? So what I want you to do is pause this podcast now, put a timer on for three minutes, and as we say sometimes in these workshops, just let your pen flow. Just write everything you can remember that you do, either sometimes or the majority of your time when you wake up in the morning before you go to school or before you go to work. Okay, so absolutely everything. From the second maybe your alarm goes or someone wakes you up, write abs absolutely everything down. This is absolutely crucial that you go ahead and do that because this is what we are going to work with to actually start to make adjustments from what you already do. There's no point in wiping the slate clean and saying, do this, 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 and this. Let's actually work from where we are at now. I'd suggest that a lot of people listening to this didn't even know that they had a morning routine. We maybe weren't even aware that they do the same thing every day. That maybe they, I don't know, they put their left sock on first before their right sock, or they, they, uh, 
brush their teeth before they go down and have breakfast or they brush their teeth before they go downstairs even or you know they maybe you start to think uh oh i'm a uh, I, oh, I have to go get my bag ready now and you start to think yourself in the morning and that's familiar feeling of being in a rush is coming in get everything down on that page there perfect so make sure you have that done on the next page there this whole workshop this whole course this whole club is actually here to empower you and many of the things that myself and Chris say uh, you could actually do yourself you could literally sit down and ask how could I get make something better? We are literally directing you in that way and showing you things that we've learned or things that have worked for us. So without me even mentioning anything about what we think is a good morning routine, I want you to write down on page five and brainstorm a couple of things to do with the routine you've just written down there that you could improve. Okay, so that might be getting up earlier, that might be changing your breakfast, that might be uh, going to bed earlier, that might be putting my bag beside my bed, putting my runners, I don't know what it is. You pick ones that you could do with your morning routine right now. Really, really important. Because like we said with goals, you've already actually achieved goals. You already have a morning routine. You already have the capability to do a little bit better. And that's all we need. A little bit of an improvement is gonna make a massive difference over a course of time. So that's what we had there, brainstorm that. Fantastic. Okay, so now that after that, you understand what a morning routine is. You understand your own morning routine. Why is an effective personalized morning routine important for you? Like, what can it achieve for you in your life? What can it help you do? What can it set you up for? Okay, and you'll be absolutely astonished about how many things that a morning routine can do to affect the outcome of your day, affect actually where you're going. If you think of, if you think of your morning, the first thing in the morning, almost like uh, you hitting a golf shot, or, I don't know, you kicking a football, a slight adjustment of the thing at the start will make a massive difference with where that golf ball actually lands. And that's like we have here with the morning. It's the small things that you do in the morning is going to make a massive difference for how you show up for the day, how organized you are, etc., etc. So I want you to take these six things down, and I'm sure we could actually spiral on for maybe 10 or 20, even more potential things. Maybe you'll have some personalized ones for yourself. We feel, first of all, that a morning routine can help organize you. In school or in work or in anything, most problems that we see on a day-to-day -day basis are from a lack of organization, okay? There's things going on in your life all over the place. You have social things, you've got school things, maybe your parents are onto you, maybe you're thinking about other stuff that you actually, maybe you love sports, maybe you play for a team, all these things going on, by having a morning routine, that can actually organize all those things into a real nice, efficient schedule for yourself. So by having a personalized one, you are organized, okay? The second thing is it can allow you to focus, and that's really important. It, f it allows you to focus on what's coming up in the day and allow you to focus on what matters for you. Like maybe the fact that, I don't know, your do the dog next door barks the whole time in the morning, that, that annoys you, but you don't have to actually focus on that. Maybe it's more important for you to focus on that you've like your bag packed. Having this morning routine allows you to center in on exactly what you have to do at that one time, be there and be present and show up as 110% versus like 30 or 40%. The next thing I want you to write in, so we've got organize, we've got focus, is time. There's like, the, the one thing we can't get more of is time. Okay, so with time, like I, I can't actually give you more of it, but if you have this morning routine, you have the same things you do almost automatically every single morning, the same effective good habits or these good ideas, that will allow you and give you more time, more time to do whatever you want, more time to be free, to maybe spend time doing other stuff versus maybe repeating the same task twice or looking for something you've, you don't know where your runners are, you don't know where your keys are or something like that. The fourth thing I've already slightly mentioned is it actually primes you for the day. And what does that mean? It's kind of priming is like, a, it's for us it's more like a mental state sort of thing. But the same way before a big, big game or something like that, or you went for a run, you would do a warm up. You don't just go into a cold. That's the same with your day. Because by actually being ready, by actually, actually being organized, by not being stressed, by being on time, by having everything you need where exactly it is, by knowing what you're doing next, 
you know, by doing a few other things we're going to tell you about in, in, as we go through the, uh, this module, you've primed yourself for the day. You've set yourself up mentally for what is actually going to come. So whether it be classes, whether it be homework, whether it be a test, whether it be meeting uh, someone in the corridor that you're, you, you want to talk to, you don't like talking to, whatever it is. The fifth one that we have here is you can actually now anticipate problems. As you go through your day, once you have this morning routine, as we, as we talk about it here, you can actually anticipate things that potentially would come up during the day and you can solve these problems. And the more you solve these problems over a longer period of time, the less they are going to have and maybe you can start solving higher order problems. So if you think about it, you're in the morning, you're putting your books in your bag, you realize, okay, I've got French here. You're thinking, uh-oh, I was meant to do French homework. I forgot to do this French homework, but I have a study period and third period. Suddenly it's done, suddenly you're not in trouble with French, suddenly you're not behind. So small things like that, they add up and they can actually just knock you off course for the day. So anticipating those problems and solving them in advance or realizing how you're gonna show up to them instead of being reactive to them, that makes a massive difference to your mindset and how you're gonna show up for the rest of the day. And the sixth one is it actually gives you consistency. And consistency is one of the most important things, would you believe, in terms of mental health, having, a, having some sort of routine. That's one of the things that psychologists actually give to people when they're feeling stress or anything like that. Have something that's consistent. And it doesn't even matter what it is. If you are getting up at the same time every day, it actually helps regulate your mood. And that doesn't matter if it's six o'clock, if it's nine o'clock, if it's eight o'clock or anything like that. Really, really important. So what it can achieve, it can help you be organized, focused, it can give you more time, it can prime you for the day, it can help you anticipate problems, and it can give you consistency. And I feel that that's massively important. And when I actually prime myself for the day in the morning, I write down every single day, and this will make more sense actually in module three when you see through it, but you are what you do every day, okay? And the day starts off, you know, you wanna start off by winning the morning, by having a good morning routine. So that is my favorite quote, you are what you do every day. Okay, so we know what it is, why it's important, and Chris is actually <clears throat> gonna talk you through the action steps here of the pillars. Brilliant, cheers for that Dave. Okay, so covered off a lot there in the, in the last uh, number of minutes. And now we're really getting down to the crux of, you know, an actual strategy that you guys can implement to make sure that you have those effective morning routines uh, kind of nailed down. Because like with the Leaving Cert, every single day counts. And as Dave said, a morning routine is going to prime you for the day. It's going to set you up so that you have a consistent output every single day uh, as a result of these routines. So um, why are the mornings so valuable? Well, one of the reasons the mornings are very valuable, and it's something that took me a long time to realize uh, uh, I wish I knew this when I was a Leaving Cert student, but mornings are great because they're quiet. Mornings are time, is a time to yourself. You're not being bombarded by other people's demands. It's a time for you to sit back, to reflect, to plan, to uh, think about what you want to achieve. So what we did in module one last week was all about setting goals. And it's important you use the mornings to, to think about how you're gonna achieve those goals and set yourself up for the day to make sure that you're, you're attending to those. And mornings are very, very important for that reason, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna go through what myself and Dave have kind of coined the three pillars of a morning routine, okay? The three things that you have to do in order to make sure that each day is gonna be effective, right? So the first pillar to a great morning routine is on page eight there. It comes down to planning your day, okay? You know the old saying, you know, fail to plan, plan to fail. Well, it's very, very true. A great day doesn't just happen by accident. A great day is planned, okay? And uh, myself and Dave like to think of planning your day a bit like baking a cake. If you were to bake a cake, what would you do? Well, you'd go off and get a recipe, okay, from a book, okay? In that recipe, you're gonna have a plan for how to bake the cake effectively. It's gonna tell you what ingredients you need, how much of each ingredient is required, how those ingredients then come together, how long do you put it in the oven for. And if you follow that recipe to the wire, you're gonna produce a consistent result, i.e. a cake. And planning your day is a little bit like writing the recipe for your day. In that recipe, you've got tasks that you have to do, you've got time frames for each of those tasks, and you've got an order to which you do those tasks in. And if you do all of those things correctly, you are going to produce a consistent result, i.e. a good day or even great day, okay? So 
it's very, very powerful to plan your day. It really makes sure that you have a consistent output each and every day. As I said, as I said, at the leaving cert, every single day counts here. So this is really gonna help you. So what we've done is, um, on page 14, we've given you literally a grid of every single hour in the week, okay? And in that, we want you to start populating each of those grids with your week, with, uh, with each hours, uh, with each hour in that week and what you're gonna be doing for it. Now, because you're students, because you're in school, uh, a lot of that time is planned for you already, okay? You've got to go to class from nine till, till one, then you've lunch, and then you've got to go from half one to four, okay? That's great. We want you to put that in the plan. But what we want you, what we mean by plan your day is we want you to plan what you're gonna do with the time you're not in, in class, okay? Your free time, okay? And that's really, really important, okay? And we want you to do this for three reasons. Okay, I want you here for three reasons. The first thing is, the first reason, and you can write these down in the notes here. The first reason, it gives you a purpose for the day, okay? If you have a distinct list of things you wanna get done in the day, I can guarantee you that you will go through the day with a lot more energy and vitality because you feel like it means something. You know, you're trying, you've got a purpose, you've got a mission to accomplish. Think about it like, you know, uh, if Ireland were playing New Zealand in a friendly rugby match, you know, yeah, like they're going to give it socks, absolutely, they're going to try hard and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's not really going to account for much. For Ireland, it will, for New Zealand, it probably wouldn't. But what if that was the World Cup final? You know, obviously there's a lot more purpose for that game. And I can tell you that everybody is going to be in a completely different state of mind if it's something like that. So by populating your day with tasks, it gives you a purpose for the day. It gives you that energy and that motivation to push on through. Okay, so that's the first. It gives you a purpose. Okay, second reason why planning your day is important is it ensures that you make time for your goals. So write that down. Okay, what do we mean by that? Well, as we said in module one, you know, we, we showed you how to set goals. Uh, which is really, really important for achieving anything in life. But what usually happens is when we set goals, we kind of just let them sit there and we let life get in the way. Okay, let's just say you had a goal to learn how to play the guitar or you had a goal to get fitter and you wanted to become a runner or you wanted to read more books or whatever, okay? Unless you actually sit down every single morning and plan in your day time and allocate it toward those goals, it won't happen. You'll just let other things fill up the time that might not be you know, important or relevant to your goals. So by setting down a plan at the start of the day between these times, I'm gonna set, set aside time to work on this because that's what I wanna get done ultimately you know, in my life, okay? Setting that time aside for your goal. And another very important thing is when you set time aside, what we encourage you to do is actually put a task timer on how long you wanna spend doing that task because you'd be surprised, our, tasks generally expand or contract to the time frame we give them. So do you ever wonder why, if you know, if the teacher gives you, you know, a week to hand in an English essay, why is everyone handing it in literally 9 a.m. the morning of the class? It's because they've been given that time frame to do it, and generally they'll push things out to last minute. But if you set yourself an hour to do something, you'd be surprised how quickly you can adjust your workload to actually produce uh, that task being completed in that time frame. So put a time frame beside it. So the first two reasons, why planning your day is important is one, it gives you a purpose. Number two, it ensures you make time for your goals. But the third reason why planning your day is so important, and this is really, really essential, is that it reduces friction when performing tasks, right? And it preserves what, what we call willpower, okay? So reducing friction, what do I mean by that? Well, it's basically like making stuff easier to do, okay? And there's five ways that we think you can reduce friction in your day and to preserve those willpower levels and all those things take place the night before. So basically, in order to have a great morning routine, it starts the night before, okay? So you can reduce friction in your day by doing five things, okay? The first one is, this is a simple one, and I learned this, you know, probably about six to eight months ago, is basically just laying out all your clothes for the day, the night before. And that sounds kind of silly, like, why would you do that? Well, like, one thing I, I, we ask the students is, what do you think Dave Lewis and Steve Jobs have in common? Well, they, they wear the same clothes every day. Why do they do that? Well, not every the same clothes, but you know, similar clothes. And the reason though, there's a very good reason for that. It's not that Dave only owns one color t-shirt. It's because Dave doesn't want to waste his willpower in you know, making decisions in the morning when you know, 
uh, he wants other, more important things to do on deciding what to wear. So it's just like that decision's already made. He just gets up, that's it, done. Whereas you know, a lot of people wake up, they're groggy, they're tired, and then they go to the wardrobe, they pull something, you know, they pull open the doors, and they're like spending 10 minutes trying to decide what to wear. That's 10 minutes wasted. You should be making that decision the night before, have it all laid out. You'll be surprised how much time that saves. That's the first thing. Second thing is you have all your food packed the night before. So if you, you know, bring in your lunch to school, have that packed the night before. Have that in the fridge ready to go. Don't be wasting time trying to decide what to, to have for lunch in the morning. That should be done in the evening time when you've got a bit of, bit of energy left in the day. It's an easy task to do, but you'd be surprised how much time that saves you. Other things are like have your bag packed the night before. Have all your books ready to go. Uh, have you know, have it at the front door. Like, don't be worrying about where you know, your homework journal is. Have all that in the bag at the front door, ready to go. Other things are like, have your route to school planned out before you get up in the, in the morning. You know, if you need bus fare, have that ready to go. If you need to get a lift to school from friend, have that all organized. You know, if you need to, um, whatever, get a lift with your parents, make sure they know or whatever. Just have those little logistic things sorted. Don't be waiting until the morning to make those decisions. And finally, you know, you can probably think of loads of things, but for example, another one might be like, have your phone charged or, uh, yeah, something to that effect, okay? Don't like leave these little tasks till the morning to figure out. Have them all done the night before, so when you get up, you just literally fly through the morning, you know, not worrying about insignificant details like that. And there's a saying down the bottom there, your blank routine is just as important as your morning routine. It's your evening routine is just important as your morning routine. Uh, because a bad evening routine, can completely derail your morning routine. So it's having those little jobs done the night before reduce friction, okay? I.e. it makes it much easier to do those little tasks in the morning. So that's the first pillar, okay? Is plan your day, have things ready to go. By the time you wake up, you're not wasting time doing insignificant things, okay? The second pillar, right, to a morning routine is what we call your must-do morning checklists, right? These are things that we feel you should be doing every single morning in order to have a consistent day, okay? And uh, there's a saying there that says a consistent morning routine builds incredible <clears throat> momentum, right? So momentum is basically like energy. Momentum is like, if, if you do physics, it's basically when something has momentum it's moving at a quite a speed and it's got a lot of energy behind it okay and a morning routine helps you build up momentum for the for the day okay <clears throat> and uh, we've got a number of tips here that we can help you build up momentum for the day think of momentum like uh you know if we were to say you had a train on a track okay and the train has st stopped and <clears throat> you were to build a wall in front of that train on the track okay right in front of it and then you were to try and drive the train through the wall. What would happen is the train would just touch the wall and it wouldn't move at all, okay? No momentum. Whereas if you were to reverse that train all the way back down to the end of the track and start it and get it up to its top speed, by the time it hit that wall, it's just gonna smash straight through it, okay? And having a great morning routine, one that builds momentum, gets energy going in your day, anytime a wall comes in front of you, i.e. like a challenge or an obstacle or a problem, you'll have a lot of momentum, energy, and you'll be able to blast straight through it, okay? So what are the things we can do to help build momentum in our mornings? Well, there's a number of things. The first one, and this is absolutely essential, and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that most students are not getting enough sleep, okay? Sleep. There was a study done in the States, and it said that 11% of high school students were getting the proper levels of sleep they should be getting. Um, in order to maintain you know, a healthy waking day. And uh, there are a number of things that you can do to ensure that that's not happening to you, okay? Imagine that one in 10 people, one in 10 students are getting enough sleep. That's clearly a problem, okay? And there are a number of things you can do. The first is, and so many people are, are you know, uh, guilty of this, it's not getting the right amount of sleep. And teenagers need eight to nine hours of sleep every single night, which is crucial. And I can say with certainty that very few students are really getting eight to nine hours of sleep, and they should be. Uh, sleep is so important for memory retention, for concentration, for just for your general health and well-being. Sleep's essential. So the first thing we say is get eight to nine hours of sleep every night. The next thing is go to bed and wake up at the same times as consistently as you can, okay? So try and get into a routine of going to bed roughly at the same time and getting up out of bed then at the same time because your body likes this. It likes like, getting into a rhythm of 
going to sleep and getting awake at the same time and it gets you used to a certain sleep pattern which will again help you sleep eight to nine hours. Whereas if you are like during the day, during the week, you're getting up at seven or half seven and then at the weekends, you're sleeping into like one in the afternoon. Like your body's kind of all over the place because it doesn't know when to sleep or when to stay awake. And by the time, let's say, if you've slept until one or two in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday, and then you wake up at seven on Monday morning, you are going to be absolutely in bits. And it's going to take a lot of energy to uh, get momentum going in your day. Um, okay, so that's the second one. Is wake up at the same time every day if you can, as best as possible, particularly leading, leading up to the leaving cert. You know, try and get up early on the weekends as well and go to bed early on the weekends. Uh, if you can in the in the lead up to the, those exams. The next thing is, and this is a very tricky thing, and most, most people in the world struggle with this, it's caffeine intake, right? We would recommend that if you can limit your caffeine consumption to uh, you know not having any till at, like uh, sorry, any after lunch. So have all your caffeine, your coffees, your teas, avoid energy drinks like the plague if you can. There's, they're absolute rubbish, they're terrible for you and they're not doing you any good. But try and you know limit your caffeine so just having it in the morning and stay away from it in the afternoon because caffeine can stay in your body like for up to six to 10 hours depending on your tolerance levels in your body and if caffeine's in your brain it is not it's going to affect your sleep without a shadow of a doubt like students coming in you know from school and cracking open a monster energy to help them study for the night that is one of the worst things you can do because that caffeine will be in your body all night and it will definitely affect your sleep so try limit your caffeine to before uh, lunchtime only. Okay, uh, the next thing is, and this is really, really powerful and very, very difficult to do, it's not using your phone an hour before you go to sleep, okay? Your phone is emitting an incredible amount of what they call blue light. That blue light is basically like sunlight and sunlight is designed to keep you awake and your phone does the exact same thing. All that blue light going into your brain is keeping you awake. Your brain thinks it's still bright outside, I should still be awake. So try as best you can an hour before you go to sleep, put your phone away, okay? And do not look at it because that is literally keeping you awake. It's stopping the production of melatonin in your brain, which is basically the chemical that makes you tired. Put your phone away. The next thing is, and the final thing is, try your best to sleep in a cold room. Don't sleep in a room that's too hot. They say that your body has to drop in temperature by about one degree in order to fall into a deep sleep, right? So sleep the window open. Don't sleep, you know, in a roasting hot room. Really, really simple. So there are a couple of things on sleep. And so I can be here all day to welcome it to sleep, but I probably put you to sleep. But uh, the sleep so so important. The next one is your alarm clock, right? So set your alarm clock, and there's and set your alarm clock and don't hit the snooze button when you wake up, right? And there's two reasons why you shouldn't hit the snooze button when you wake up in the morning. Okay, number one comes down to what's called activation energy okay once the alarm goes off you get that sudden rush of blood going through your body and that kind of like shock almost that basically is your activation energy that's trying to get you up and get you out of bed right and if you snooze the alarm clock what you're doing is you're then falling back to sleep and then the next time it goes off you get another rush of energy through your body but it's nowhere near as powerful as the first rush of energy you got okay so it's not as strong in terms of getting you out of bed and waking you up Okay, and if you hit snooze again, the next time it goes off, that energy is even less and less and less and less. So it'll be more and more difficult to get up and get the day started. So get up uh, on the first snooze. The second thing is as well, when you set your alarm clock and set it for a certain time, that's basically like setting a goal the night before. And if you don't get up when that uh, alarm clock goes off, you are failing the first goal that you set in the day. And that's a bad thing because that's like losing. Your first thing you try to achieve, you lose. And you start off on the wrong foot, right? Whereas if you get up and you get up on time, well, you said you would, you get an early win in, which is really, really important because that starts building a chain of events of you know basically achieving things and getting things done, which you won't want to break, okay? The next thing is, and relates to what I just said there, it's the early win, okay? And Dave's kind of referred to this as being a module about developing more routine of a Navy SEAL. The very first thing a Navy SEAL does when they wake up is they make their bed, okay? They don't make their bed because they wanna get good at making beds. They make their bed because they wanna develop discipline and they wanna get an, an early win in. They wanna achieve something. They wanna get a task done. And by making your bed is one of those early wins, okay? If you've set your alarm, you've got up on time and then you've made your bed, you've just got two tasks done, right? You've built that momentum, you've built that chain of wins basically. And those wins keep, they keep going throughout the day you're gonna build up a whole lot of momentum. Next thing is hydrate, okay? When you're asleep, you lose up to two liters of water. To, you're losing a lot of water, you gotta hydrate yourself. So as soon as you wake up, drink a liter of water if you can, 
like so, so important because hydration is incredibly essential for brain function. So drink as much water as you can in the morning to, uh, to hydrate yourself, okay? Next thing is move or exercise, okay? Now you don't have to all go to the gym and lift loads of weights, but by just moving, by exercising, by getting blood flowing through your body, if that means doing a few push-ups or jumping jacks or just going for a walk, around the block for 10 minutes. Like just move, just exercise, because there's nothing better for getting energy into your body by getting blood flowing, by exercising in the morning. It's so, so good. Uh, the next thing is focus, right? So we talked about planning your day, sitting down in the morning, writing down into that grid that we've given you on page 14 there. What are you gonna be doing in your free time? Put a plan in place for that free time and think about it. Think about your day before you start the day and focus on the things you want to get done and achieve. And that's really, really important, okay? Because that's going to prime you, as Dave said, for a successful day, okay? And the last thing is, if you get all these things done, if you get all these kind of uh, rituals completed, okay? Reward yourself with something for doing it because it's difficult to, to do this kind of thing. But if you build in a little reward into your morning routine, it is going to keep you anchored to it. Like what I do is I drink a cup of coffee. Once I got all these things done, I have a cup of coffee. Uh, if you don't like coffee, that's fine. Listen to your favorite YouTube uh, or podcast. Watch something on YouTube. Just reward yourself with something that... Uh, you know, that, that's going to anchor you to that routine, as I said. Okay, so the third pillar, right? And it's called, the, of more routine, is called toughest task first, okay? And this is one of the most valuable life hacks that, you know, I've ever learned. And it basically, and there's a saying there, it says, make every day count. And what this uh, productivity hack does is ensures that every day is effective, right? Ensures that every day that you... Uh, embark on, you get something done. Okay, it's really, really important, right? Uh, now, I want you to ask, think about the following statement, true or false. Productivity means getting more things done each day. So productivity means getting more things done each day. What do you think about that? Is that true? Well, I'd ask, you know, well, what things are you doing? And are those things important? Right, because a lot of people are going around and they are busy fools, you know, they're going around, they talk about how busy they are, but in reality, like, maybe the things they're doing aren't really getting them anywhere, okay? Well, the way me and Dave define productivity, and you write this down, is productivity is getting important things done consistently over time. So it's getting important things done consistently over time. And how do we define what an important task is? Or how do we decide what an important task is? An important task is a task that moves you towards your goals, okay? A task that is something that is relevant to what you want to achieve in your life, okay? That is really, really important. It's not doing some, something for someone else, but if that is part of your goals, great. But it, it's doing something that moves you towards your own goals, okay? And um, this productivity strategy is really, really straightforward. It's basically, once you have all those important tasks, okay, what you do is you do the most difficult task in the day first, okay? You do the task that requires the most amount of willpower to complete. Okay, so if you have a load of things to get done in your day, uh, if you look at all of those things, you decide, yeah, they're all important. They're all important to me. And you go, okay, well, do you know what? This one task, I have to uh, prepare my homework, uh, so my home ec journal, which is due tomorrow. I've got to hand that in. I've got to just finish, finishing touches on it. I really don't like the subject. I find it tough, but you know, I've got to get it done for tomorrow. Do that task first, rather than studying for a maths test that's next week. You know, you might love maths, and it's easier. You know, it doesn't require you know as much effort to kind of pick out the maths book. But like, you'd be better off doing that tough task first. And the reason is because willpower, which is something we talked about, willpower is a resource, right? So you want to do the task that's going to require the most amount of willpower first in your day. While, the, while you've got energy, while you've got the willpower, because you don't want to leave it to the end of the day, it's something that's really, really difficult that you don't really like doing, but it's important you get done. You want to do that while you're fresh, okay? And on page 11 there, you'll see we've got what we call the task pyramid there, right? It's really, really simple. We don't need to go through this in huge detail, but essentially what you do is you draw out a pyramid, okay? And you, you do a number of levels in that pyramid. And what you do is once you have all your tasks listed out, your important tasks, you mark off which are the most uh, taxing, which are the ones that require the most willpower, and you put them in order from the most difficult at the bottom of the pyramid, then the, the next most difficult above that, and so on. And you start off with doing the toughest task first. And even if 
you only get that one task done in the day. You only get that thing done. That's all. That's okay. Be sure you've got at least one very important thing done. Whereas if you have a lot of easier tasks on your list, like get a haircut and see your mate, you know, and watch the Kardashians, you know, if you get all those three things done before you start doing your home ec journal, that's not going to be a very good day if you don't get the home ec journal done. You want to do the tough thing first. Okay, so on, the, on page 12, I'll just give an example of a task pyramid that you guys can fill in in your own time. So that's it. Yeah. Fantastic. So loads of stuff there in those three pillars, loads of stuff that you could enact, loads of ideas, loads of things that you could apply to your morning routine that we've written out at the very start of this workshop. And on page 13, it asks you a question. What can you change? Okay. What can you change? What do you think that you could change? What could you add or subtract from your morning routine to put yourself in your desired course, to put you towards where you want to be? Now, I don't think, and I, I, don't, I wouldn't say Chris would I'd say he would say the same, that you should do every single thing we put there, there like do it tomorrow, because that's not going to allow you to be consistent with it and keep going. So what we feel is, okay, let's take three for now. Let's take three things we're going to change. Either we're going to add something or subtract something from what we have from there, just to begin with. Obviously, we can add more and more and more as you see the success uh, rolling in with them. Uh, and when you, wh when you decide them, let's write them down because by writing them down, it actually causes you to, I don't know, those things just happen more. It, causes, it gives you a commitment. You've almost wrote a contract with yourself there. So put down three things, but also we want you to put down why you're going to change them. What's that going to do for you? Like, don't just do them again because myself and Chris say it. Don't just hydrate because we say, it, say it's important. Say, if you decide to say hydrate in the morning, well, because it, it switches my brain on, allows me to focus more in class, and I find myself maybe losing focus. So make sure you put a why behind it. It says effortless come with anything comes from putting in consistent effort. If you were to do 20 new things, it would be very hard to go ahead and do them the first day. You'd wake up, you potentially wouldn't want to do them, you might not do them. Three is manageable. Okay, and if you consistently do them, they're going to become automatic and then you can add more and more and more. At the very bottom, it says win the morning, win the day. And I firmly believe that for all the reasons we've just said there. Now, what Chris actually said to us a few minutes ago, he said, don't start your day until you have it finished. And we, I think that is so, so, so important. And that's just mentally. But I also feel don't start your week until you have it finished. Don't start your month until you have it finished. Don't start your term. Don't start your year. And by planning that whole thing, going through that whole thing, okay, it may happen slightly bit, di slightly bit different, you're gonna be more prepared for what's actually gonna come. And as Chris alluded to on page 14, we have a daily planner there. And what I would show in the workshop uh, for students is my daily planner. From, it's actually my one from last year in school, which is quite similar. You guys listen to the podcast won't be able to see it, but what I essentially have is a worksheet exactly like that, and I've color coordinated it into different things that I'm gonna do. Work as a certain color, uh, health as a certain color, sleep as a certain color, uh, my own time as a certain color, time that I can deal with as a certain color, and by having that there, I can find, just like in my day, pockets in my week, where I can insert activities of things that I want to do. Maybe I want to go to the cinema, maybe I want to uh, meet up with a friend. Uh, you think you're busy if it's not down on paper, but then you start to see areas that maybe you could switch things around. So that goes for your day, week, and year. What I suggest you do, and like we give you homework and we give you ideas at the end of every class, uh, or at the end of every workshop, is take all that stuff in, look at your morning routine, decide, of three things you're going to change, whether you're, whether you're going to add or you're going to subtract from them. Don't forget to put a why behind it. That's going to uh, give you a bit more power. And then I suggest you also start putting stuff in in your week there. What time you get up at. It, like Chris said, putting in your classes. And then we can focus on the time around your classes to give you the day that you want. It doesn't have to be 24 hours of non-stop study. In fact, I would not recommend that for many reasons. But that's what I suggest you do. So. That's, that's it. That's the workshop for module two, how to develop the morning routine of a Navy SEAL. Uh, tune in next week for when we actually go through one on habits and how you can develop habits. And I, that's actually my favorite one. It's my favorite module, this, this habit module. Um, so don't forget uh, to tune in also for uh, a little plant side chat of myself and Chris on how we actually developed our morning routines and what we do, which is slightly different and I'm really looking forward to chatting about that. All right, thanks very much. Chat soon. Cheers.